shit ain't gonna everybody. I'm a man. <laughs> <laughs> Happy Veterans Day to each and every veteran. We we really want to applaud you for your service. Hello, everyone. I am Minister Curtis. I'm Minister Issa. And we come from the Alter International Church where we serve under the great, 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 great apostle. Gene August. Yes, Amen. yes. Yes. Amen. Hey, Uncle Mike, thank you for watching. Share this. Y'all got to share it. You got to share it. You got to share it. Share, share it. And share. Share with your friends. Yes, yes. Yes. Amen. Thank y'all for joining us once again at the Healing Room. It's a good day. It's a blessed day because our veterans have uh, shared their lives with this country. They've spared their lives for this country. So we honor you today and we thank you all for your service. I thank my husband for his service. I thank my brother. I thank my father and those many of you who are watching who are not watching. We thank all of you for your service to this country. We don't take it lightly that your families put in a lot of time missing you, loving you, and praying for your safe return. So we say thank you and we bless God for you. Amen. Amen. Before we get started, we always like to pray before we get started. But we also have, let me say this before we get started, we come from the Alton International Church. Yeah. The address is 8039D Penn Randall Place, Upper Marlboro, Maryland, 20772. And the great apostle, Gene August. <laughs> Amen. But let's go to prayer before we uh, start today. Yeah. Oh, Heavenly Father, Lord, in the precious name of Jesus, Lord, we come to magnify you, Lord. Lord, we come to pre uh, prepare the people, Heavenly Father, with your word, oh, Heavenly Father. And Lord, as we prepare the people with your word, oh, Heavenly Father, Lord, we ask yeah. that the Holy Spirit will reach out and touch each and every one of us. Lord, I ask, oh, Heavenly Father, that you will massage the people's hearts, oh, Heavenly Father, and let their ears, oh, Heavenly Father, hear the word of God, oh, Heavenly Father, in the amen. teaching that we're going to bring forth. In Jesus' name we pray. Jesus, amen. 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 Yes, yes, yes. So we're coming from the book of Acts. Everybody, we're going to read chapter 18, verses 1 through 3. We're talking about iron sharpening iron, amen, through relationships. So stay tuned. We hope that you read along with us, get out your Bible, get out your apps, whatever you use, that you learn the word of God so you can follow along with us, okay? So here we go. After this, Paul left Athens and went to Corinth. There he met a Jew named Aquila, a native of Pontus, who had recently come from Italy with his wife Priscilla, because Claudius had ordered all the Jews to leave Rome. Paul went to see them, and because he was a tent maker as they were, he stayed and worked with them. Okay, amen. We're amen. gonna stop right there. So we're gonna do the back story of how all this began. Amen. Amen. And so um, some people haven't heard of Aquila and Priscilla, but Aquila and Priscilla, they were Jews mm -hmm. and, and they were from like uh, Asia, Asia, and they had Roman names. And so uh, Priscilla, you know, that means like old fashioned, mm -hmm. ancient, and Aquila means eagle. Mm -hmm. And so uh, these, uh, this couple right here, they were very versed in the word and they were what you call tent makers. Yeah. And so let me explain this to you. Uh, the, the rabbis believe that if you did not have a trade, yeah. you was destined to be a thief. Yeah. And so, and so each and every one of them, when you grew up, you had some type of trade, mm -hmm. tent maker, glass maker. Jesus was a carpenter. Yeah. This was traditional so that you can grow to be prosperous, but also it taught you business. Yeah. They were yeah. business people. They were from the business market. Mm -hmm. And so also they were married, but however, they were very versed in the word and they knew a lot and they, and they, and they sharpened each other each and every day as they worked, they did ministry and they were missionaries. They were always married. They were never mentioned separately in the Bible. His wife, Priscilla, was mentioned four times out of the six times that their names are mentioned in um, Acts, in Romans, in 1 Corinthians, and 2 Timothy. They were always mentioned together because they were a couple who did ministry together, which is a powerful thing when you do ministry together. You can reach more people individually and collectively, and that's how Priscilla and Aquila was. When they met Paul, in Ephesians, they were all tent makers. And so they invited Paul to come live with them and they became business partners and they also became 
partners in ministry. Amen. On, so when Paul was teaching and preaching, they would listen to him. So we don't know whether or not they were believers before they met Paul or after they began to listen to him. The Bible doesn't specify that, but we do know that they began going out and evangelizing along with Paul in his second um, missionary journey, because in this one, this was his second missionary journey. So they begin to go out and travel and sail with him to different places as he went along the way. Amen. Amen. So Aquila and Priscilla, they invited Paul mm -hmm. into their home. Yeah. And, and eight, for 18 months, they basically were in training. Yeah. I mean, everything, every time Paul preached, they was with them. Yeah. When, when they were building tents, Paul was with them. Mm -hmm. So, so they was ministering they were getting the word straight from an apostle. Yeah. And so they were ministers of the word and they was sharpening iron. Yeah. And so they spent a lot of time mm -hmm. in the word and they spent a lot of time touching the people and they and they moved to and fro. When Paul moved, he, they moved just like that. Just like that. <laughs> <laughs> and they were very good yeah. at what they did as well because they were known in the marketplace <laughs> as prosperous tent makers. And so, so often when you have a couple that 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 uh come together as one, they are powerful in the ministry because they can they can speak to the women and they can speak to the men and they can bring it all together so that everyone can be on one accord. Absolutely. And so while they were in Ephesus, Paul had went on to Antioch. He left them there and they were doing ministry there in their home. Their church was their home. So a lot of times, a lot of churches like they do today, they start in the homes of people. They yes. do Bible study in their homes. They do whatever type of readings they want to do. They do a lot of different events in their home. And eventually their home becomes the church. And then they expand and they end up building a church. And that's what happened with this pair here. They started church in their home. And eventually they end up erecting a church, creating a church. Amen. And so while they were in Ephesus, they met a man named Apollos. Apollos was very well spoken. He was smart. He was trained in the scripture, but he was lacking two things. He was only baptized in the way that John the Baptist did, was, which was in the repentance. He was baptized in repentance. So he had no idea that while he was out there preaching the word and teaching people, he wasn't given the full life of Jesus Christ. He was only given what he knew that John the Baptist had gave them. He did not have the Holy Spirit. He did not know of the Holy Spirit. So when they heard him preaching, Priscilla and Aquila kindly took him to their home and trained him in the right way. They began to learn him more things about Jesus Christ, the death, the burial, the resurrection, and the coming of the Holy Spirit. And that's why we say iron sharpening iron. The Bible says you will know them by the fruit they bear. They were fruitful people. So when they released Apollos to go out and begin to teach, then he became very effective in his teaching because now he know the full story of Jesus Christ. Amen. And so what we're saying is, is this, it's always good if you are um, in the Bible, you have uh, Nabon and you have Abigail yes. and, and they were married, but they were two different people. Yes. Abigail was going this way. Nabon was going this way. And so what ended up happening was uh, uh, Nabon ended up dying and Abigail married David. Because 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 she was a man, she was a woman after God's own heart, just like David was. And so so what so what ends up happening is so often we will we will line up with people that we are not lined up in the spirit. And so when you when you do that, your 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 marriage can be ineffective if you don't find that common ground. And so right here, Aquila and Priscilla. They were on point with each other. They were always together because they had the same interests and they put Christ first yes. in everything that they did. And they put themselves in harm's way many times mm -hmm. being with Paul because they knew what was right to do in the ministry. So they were always equipping other people to serve in the ministry. They equipped the Apollos. They equipped people in Rome. They equipped people in Ephesus. So they were very well known uh, uh, evangelists in those cities. So like us, like you, you ought to be very well known for, for teaching the word of God to the people who you come into contact with. Sometimes you got to ask yourself, are you a hindrance to people or are you a helper to people? 
Are you helping them to find Christ? Are you helping them to learn about who he is? Are you trying to save their soul? Are you trying to help make sure they're going in the right direction? The Bible says the steps of a righteous man are ordered by the Lord. So when we help people in that direction, we are saving their souls. And that's what uh, Priscilla and Quilla were equipped to do through the apostle Paul, because through him, they learn more. And through Aquila and Priscilla, Apollos learn more. So we are passing the torch to people so that they can continue to spread the gospel of Jesus Christ. All right. And so, so often what, we, what you will find is, is that yes. in the Bible, you find this couple right here. They were missionaries where people came to them. Mm -hmm. They trained them and they sent them out. Yes. And, and, and by them being tent makers, they also knew how to provide homes. Yes. They knew how to, the proper way to build a ministry. OK, you don't have somewhere to sleep. We know we can get some goat head and we can get some thread <laughs> and we can get this and yeah. we can build you a little tent. Yeah. But when we build you that little tent, we're going to minister to you and get you ready yeah. so that when you leave your tent, yeah. you can take off running yeah. and go and preach the gospel to right. the people and show them how to do the same thing. And so That's these true. people were people that that, that helped mm -hmm. uh, uh, to get that stepping stone to get people to the next level. Right. So they were very hospitable people. They always invited people to their home so they can teach them the word of God and teach them the way of salvation. Amen. And that's what we're supposed to do. We are to open our homes in certain occasions to let people come in so that you can introduce them to God. And if you can't open your home, go meet them at the Starbucks. Go meet them at the Walmart. You can meet them everywhere. The, the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. And wherever you go, wherever you open your mouth, the word of God should come out to somebody. You can't hoard the word of God. You can't be a spiritual hoarder. Let that word go and let it help somebody. Let it build somebody up. Let it help somebody be delivered and set free from whatever it is they're going through. That's what we're supposed to do as evangelists in the world. The Bible says we are to go out and create other disciples. And that's what we're supposed to do. And that's what Aquila and Priscilla did. They went out and they created other disciples. They let their fruit be shown to the world. Amen. And so it's just important. Mm -hmm. I mean, like this weekend, we saw uh, Michael Mitchell, who's yeah. on with us now. Yeah. And he asked us some questions. And so, and so often, mm -hmm. I think what ends up happening with us mm -hmm. is that we 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 ashamed to ask questions and what we don't know. Mm -hmm. And now if we did not know the answer to the questions mm -hmm. that he asked us, we have an apostle just like right. Paul where we can ask that question mm -hmm. and give that information back because one thing about uh, 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 the Bible and, and life, we, you never want to be held in bondage because what you don't know. The Bible says, my people shall perish for lack of knowledge. If you don't have the knowledge, how can you be free? So, so often we, we, we oh, I'm not going to ask that question because I don't, I, I don't want nobody to think that I'm not smart. It's not that you're not smart. It's just that you don't know everything. And, and when you need a no or you need uh, somewhere to go get information, you need to go to the source to get that information so that you can apply that information to your daily life. That's right. It's about creating relationships with people. Our apostle says all the time, it doesn't cost anything to be kind to anybody. You ought to go wherever you go. You ought to be creating relationships. You ought to be creating something with other people. And then that's going to help you to go forward. And that's what Paul, Aquila and Priscilla and Apollos were about. They were about creating relationships and moving forward. Paul used to call Priscilla Prisca, P-R-I-S-C-A for short. He gave her a nickname like we do here. We call people Moopy and Boo Boo and Poo Poo, whatever it is we want to call them. Right. We give the people we love, we give them nicknames. And right. that's what he did for Priscilla. He gave her a nickname. So when you create good relationship, a long lasting relationship, it helps people to be able to open up to you and ask the questions like um, Michael Mitchell did for us. Uncle Mike did to us. He was he was comfortable in the setting. He was comfortable enough to ask the question that will help him get closer to God. And that's what we're supposed to do with other people. We're supposed to present ourselves in the way that make people comfortable to be able to ask those hard questions that they have about God, about the Holy Spirit, and about his son, Jesus Christ. We're supposed to make ourselves available. The Bible says we are the light in this world. We are the salt of the earth. Amen. We are supposed to present ourselves in a place and in, in, in such a manner that people are not nervous to come up to us. Amen. Amen. And so I... I what I like about Priscilla and Aquila was mm -hmm. 
they were willing to learn. Yeah. And I think that each and every one of us need to have the teachable spirit mm -hmm. where we can get underneath somebody mm -hmm. to, to teach us what we don't know. Right. Because we know for sure that we can't live forever. But mm -hmm. if we can live forever and have our, our spirit to, to transition to eternity, we want it to be in a, in a, in a place that is good. Mm -hmm. And so, so often people are ashamed in what they don't know. And so that, that hurts you because when you're ashamed of what you don't know, but you don't want to ask that question, it just puts you in a place where you think you know everything. And that's not the best of, of, of places to be. But Aquila and Priscilla were persistent in knowledge. They were persistent in teaching people. They were persistent in doing God's work. And doing God's work, you it's not easy. And so often people think that people are, that, that are in the gospel are, are, um, are passive. And, and that's not the case because even Jesus was a radical. If you go back and you look in the Bible, Jesus went in the temple where the Pharisees and Sadducees were, and he just turned the tables over. And so he, he let them know, like, look, this is not a marketplace. This is supposed to be a place of, of holiness. But y'all ain't here selling goat milk. Y'all ain't here selling this. Y'all ain't here selling that. But Jesus was bold. And so are you doing this walk, you have to be bold, but you have to be gentle because the people need certain information from you. And if you have the information, you can be testifying to someone mm -hmm. how to free themselves from bondage. Yes, absolutely. So partner up with some people who are like-minded, like just like you. Pray and ask God to send you some people that are like-minded like you, that can help you to get to where you need to be spiritually and mentally. We are at a church, at a place where we thought we would never find. I mean, when I tell you, it's a gold mine to us. It's a gold mine to us because we are learning so much at the Altar International Church. We sit under a, a man who is, that, all I can say is come see a man who told us all about ourselves. Amen. He told us everything about us and still telling us everything about ourselves that we're doing wrong, that we're doing right, that the Spirit wants us to know about us to help build us up, to help us grow. And oftentimes you're in a place where instead of them helping you grow, they're putting you down, they're knocking you down. And you need to be in a place that's going to help to elevate your mind, your spirit, and your soul. Your soul is your mind, your will, and your emotions. And when those get distraught, then you kind of little get depressed and you go into anxiety and you do so many other things. But when you sit in the house, that's going to help you to learn and grow and learn that word the proper way. When I tell you that we are in that place, we are in that place and we are not regretting it. We are so honored to be there and we're happy to be there. Our kids are growing. We are growing and we want you all to grow. And that's why we invite you all out to Miracle Friday. We invite you all out to our Sunday services because we want you to experience the same thing that Priscilla and Aquila experienced, the same thing that we're experiencing in our life right now. We don't want you to miss out on that blessing. So you're saying we Priscilla and Aquila? We Priscilla <laughs> and Aquila. Absolutely. Here we go. Okay. Live and in person. All right. Look, for people that came in a little late, yes. we, we were reading Acts 18, 1 through 3. Yes. And, and we were just showing how Priscilla, Aquila, and Paul. Yes were sharpening yeah. each other. They, they, they came together. Yes, they, they were tent makers. So if you are a tent maker, basically you yes. are providing shelter. Yes. And while you are providing shelter, you're providing knowledge yes. to the people and helping them to grow. Mm -hmm. Because that's what it's all about, is to help each, ever, each, each person grow, yes. and, and not only in the world, but with Christ. Mm -hmm. And so, so often... We leave people behind because they say, you know what, I got mine and, and they got to get this. But it's it's nothing to lend up, reach your arm back and pull somebody up and what you know, because that's how we all grow. I don't know everything, but if I want to learn something about uh, something in particular, you have to get yourself a mentor and you be a mentee and you sit down and you listen and you learn and you grow in whatever you want to know. And so, so often, we don't pass that torch. We keep the torch. And then when the flame go out, we don't have nobody to pass it to. And it's dead. And, and anytime anything is dead, it cannot grow. Uh, you're always supposed to leave a legacy for the next person. Paul's legacy was Timothy. Timothy was his son in the faith. So he left everything that he taught Timothy in Timothy's hand. And Timothy had to take that torch and go with it, just like the Olympics. 
He told them to keep on going. Don't be afraid of men in their faces. Just do what you're supposed to do. Do what God has called you to do. And that's what all of you ought to be doing. That's what we ought to be doing. Taking care of our father's business. Jesus said, I'm about my father's business. And that's what we all supposed to be about. Be about your father's business. Be about your daddy's business. All right. All right. If this word bless you, you can sow a seed at www.prayertimewiththeapostle.com slash donation because there is no nation like a donation. Uh-huh. And I mean, uh, I, I really like this word. Yes. This this wasn't like no preaching word. It was more yes. like a teaching word because uh, sometimes we come on here and sometimes we, you know, we get filled up with the spirit and, <laughs> and we start preaching. And then sometimes we come on here and this is just teaching because, you know, you got to learn how to be able to help someone yes. or to be helped. Absolutely. Absolutely. We thank y'all for watching us tonight. We, we ask that you turn in to, tune in tomorrow. We'll be back at 8.30 tomorrow night, as usual, Monday through Thursday. We come on at 8.30. And then Friday, you know, we come on early at 2.30 because we're not missing Miracle Friday at the Altar Church. We always there. We invite you to come out as well this Friday at the Altar International Church for Miracle Friday at 6.30. The address is 8039 uh, Unit D. Upper Marlboro, Maryland, 20772. Amen. So we, we, we hope to see you there. We hope to fellowship with you eventually. Amen. Thank y'all for watching. Remember, love on your parents, love on your children and your friends. And remember, love the vets today. Amen. Because they've been through a lot. They've seen a lot and, 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 and done a lot for us in this country and our freedom. Amen. God bless you, everybody. Have a good night. We love you and there's nothing you can do about it. Have a good evening. Good God night. bless you. Thank you, Facebook. Thank you, YouTube. Good night. Have a great night.